I've set some goals for this car and today we are going to accomplish one of those goals because I believe you have to set goals. I have really high expectations of this build. So yes, I have very long term goals, but we have to focus on the short term right now, which is I made a little bit of space right here in the garage. You see just a little bit of space because a lot of this stuff is going to be coming out of the vehicle today. To recap last video, I discussed ripping the whole front of the engine off, which we are going to do because the oil leak down below. My goal today is to get to that oil leak and figure out what is leaking oil. We're gonna start with draining the coolant and see how far we get in one day. And under the car we go. You can see the little drain petcock there of coolant that is actually covered in coolant. Look at that, see all that dry, crusty white stuff? That means it's been leaking. Next order of business will be to get some of these reservoir overflow tank hoses out of the way. Top radiator hose will come out and then we're gonna get these fans out. Um, I believe this whole intercooler pipe and the one that actually goes to the intercooler is gonna have to come out because down there, it is actually right up against the front timing cover. She does not disappoint, boys. No, she does not. Well, so we had to remove the grill because I could not get the upper radiator mounts off because there is a nut and bolt going through the cross member. And look, it has multiple installation holes for whatever kind of radiator you like. This hose clamp is not what it says it is. It is not ideal because look, you see how there's no liner in there? It's just exposed to whatever surface you're clamping down on. And look at this. Look at what I did to the hose. It just destroyed the hose. I was really hoping to be able to pull out the radiator and the fan shroud and everything together, but there's just not enough room. So, I mean, look at how much better it looks just without that top red crusty radiator hose. But we're getting there. I did take a little bit of a bath with coolant, but that's just expected. Of course, it's that bottom radiator hose that got me. We're making some progress. Look at the room we have created. Also, please, this is an announcement for anybody working on a car that wants to make it look different or better for cheap. Please, enough with the black spray paint. This freaking car has spray paint everywhere. The heads are spray painted, the block is spray painted. Now, part of the radiator is spray painted. When I first got it, the front mount intercooler was spray painted. So please, easy on the black spray paint. Now we just gotta get these accessory belts off. There's two adjusters, there's one here, and there's another adjuster here. We just gotta loosen, pull the belts off, and then we should get the uh, crank pulley bolts off here. Probably have to use an impact gun on that, and then the front cover will be able to come right off. Because you can't get the cover off without getting this off. Plan B's out there, I'd love to hear them. Uh, let's try. Well, the whole car's moving, so I don't think that's a good idea. Okay, we have an old belt wrapped around itself with vice grips holding it together, so it's the only thing that's not letting it slip. Try the leverage against the tiny garage. Oh, I think I broke something. Look at that broke the reducer. Why would I be using a little chrome reducer on something so powerful that needs so much torque? That did not work out well. I don't think this is gonna work either. I don't have any half inch sockets. So I got this one and a big pole. Let's see if we can't break this, but it is Craftsman, so what do you say? If it breaks, we'll get a new one. That was a lot of noise. Something went flying. Fairly certain we've snapped the internals of the ratchet, so I don't know. I think I'll buy more tools, I guess. Well, two things. Okay. I cannot get the crank pulley off. I'm gonna have to buy a 22 millimeter, something with a big breaker bar. Little fun fact, it looks like I figured I could probably take off the side covers for the heads without taking off the crank pulley. You can see this little seam right here. But we got one, two out. These bottom jerks are not coming out. So I'm thinking 
the nut that sits inside the rear of the front cover is probably seized and broken and just spinning because I mean, look at the condition of that one right here. It is now the next day. I had to walk away before I did any more damage than I already did, which I'm gonna show you and I'm not proud of, but I actually ordered some more tools. Got a 22 mil deep socket, uh, half inch drive, and I, I couldn't get the crank pulley off, so I ordered a crank pulley holding tool. Everything I tried to do, uh, I could not get the freaking crank pulley off. So we're gonna leave this alone until the tools come in, but now we are going to address um, the timing cover bolts. Like a couple of different ways I found online to remedy this. Uh, we're gonna start with the least invasive way, evasive way, whatever, um, and then work from there. You could put a maybe a punch through the back. There is a hole right behind it. Um, so right through here, I mean, there's not, a, not much clearance on all of these, but there is a hole through here. I actually sprayed some penetrating oil in there, let it sit overnight. Next off would be some heat. You can, I've heard people say if you heat this up enough, it might grab the bolt again. That seems unlikely. The next option would be, I've heard of also people drilling holes in here. Another option would be to cut the bolt off. A lot of people just say they just grind or cut the head of the bolt off. I like to save these front covers because they are in pretty decent shape. Um, the damage occurs at the back cover, which those will have to be replaced. I don't have a choice. So I don't want to cut the head off unless I absolutely have to. Um, you could, I would, might even take a chisel to this and to see if I could break off some pieces and get to that bolt. And the part that I am least proud of, right there, do you see it? The damage to the condenser. This was from the impact wrench that I was shoving in here. There wasn't quite enough room to get in there, but I decided to force it in there. One other thing I wanted to show you guys, there is so much crud. Now, if anybody knows, please comment down below. There's so much, look at all this garbage that's like built up on top of the timing cover. Where's that coming from? I mean, the car did have an, um, an oil pressure sending unit that was tapped in um, to the top of the block, and then I relocated it to, I don't know, let's see where it is. Oh, it's over here. You see, so there's the um, oil pressure sending unit to the gauge, or sensor to the gauge, and then there's a, a steel braided line. So I replaced that. I don't think that's the problem, because this doesn't look like fresh oil. Um, it just looks really crusty and built up on top of the timing cover. And I think, from what I can see, the, the power steering pump is here, and it's not looking too good. I mean, you see the bottom bolt there? It's super crusty and leaky. Um, it looks like that might have to be replaced. Off camera, the punch method from the back did not work. You just keep banging on the cover and it just kind of springs back, so that's not gonna work. The heat method did not work, shock. So now I think we're gonna resort to the chisel or drill method. Gotta get these things out. Makes me nervous because there is a little guide that goes under here as well. getting in there, but I don't know what we're gonna do when we get there. Well, the front cover is off. One side at least. I mean, look, you can see all the oil and crust built up. Those, that design with that bolt right there, oh my gosh, it's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I tried to cut the front one off, one of the, the bolts. That was taking so long, wasn't going anywhere. So I figured the best thing to do is just to chisel through the actual rear cover part that holds the bolts in and then I can just pry on the front cover and it'll come off. So clearly these will have to be replaced, the rear ones. Day three of the world's longest timing cover removal job. I have a crank pulley holding tool that I bought and a cam gear holding tool that I bought to hold them in place Why I loosen up that nut because nothing else worked. Will this work? I have no idea, but we're about to find out gear holding tool is in place and I got a proper 22 mil impact socket with a half inch drive. See how it goes. Oh, look at that. It just sheared off the bolts. Wow, I guess you don't skimp out and buy cheap tools, huh? Should have got the real one and not the $25 one online. Do you see the engine lifting? Because I don't have the motor mount tight. Oh my gosh, I freaking think I just did it. Ho, ho, ho. I tried everything. I tried to 
stick a pry bar back by the flywheel. I tried a bigger breaker bar, different breaker bars, a bigger pipe. I couldn't do it, and all of a sudden, just crack. I think this is the third day I've been trying to get this freaking thing off. Day four of trying to get the timing cover off. That's what happens when you're a dad and a husband and you work full time trying to work on a project car one or two hours at a time. Cover is finally removed. Oil pump looks like it needs to be resealed. It's got a cool little aftermarket guide on there. This does have, from what I can tell, all Japanese parts. They all say Koyo or uh, made in Japan, which is great. Um, this here is the tensioner. I don't know if you can see that with a little bit of light maybe. In the top of it, where the piston goes in and out, right up in here, it looks like it's leaking. A major thing that needs to be changed because when those go out, it's bad. This video ran way longer than I expected. I don't even know if anybody's watching anymore. And if you are, I appreciate it. So also hit the thumbs up down below because you're hanging in there with me. What do you think I should do? Comment down below. Should I just do full on OEM, Tommy belt, water pump, oil pump, pulleys, idler, everything? Comment down below. I really appreciate your input. If you're still there, thank you. If you're new, please consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of my shenanigans. And I will see you guys all next time. Have a great day. Please help support the channel. Hit the thumbs up down below. Also subscribe. Watch a couple more of these videos here. It really helps the channel and I really appreciate it. Thank you.